You may well have heard of Keysim by now. We are a rapidly growing startup supplying multi-network SIM cards, mostly for Internet of Things connectivity. This needs updating, but we're growing really, really quick. Um, and to people just starting to watch us now, it's great to see the growth. But I thought I would tell you about what went in to actually building from scratch this business to what it is today. And it is a story that is full of horror, in all honesty. So, it all begins where I am working in an alarm receiving centre. And we use vast numbers of SIM cards, okay? And at the end of my time there, we did a particular project, which was loan worker devices. So loan worker devices are threat to life systems. These are given to people that potentially are gonna come under attack. Imagine care workers, bailiffs, housing association staff, delivery drivers, anybody that's working alone. There's like 8 million loan workers out there. So they were given these per little personal safety devices. It's a GPS enabled device. It has a GSM module, GPS, and it's essentially got like a built-in phone. And if these people come under attack, they press the button, it signals to the control center, they can listen in using the audio path, and if the attack is genuine, they can see where they are and initiate a response. Could be the business that responds, it could be a police response if it's confirmed. But the idea is you get somebody help. The SIM cards were absolutely a critical component of that project. And we deployed over 10,000 of them. We developed from scratch the Teltonica GH5200. So if you Google that item, that's what we created um, all them years ago and deployed. And continually, do you know what ruined it? SIM cards. And there's two incidents that spring to mind. Incident number one, we go into full outage on a Friday at around three o'clock. Imagine what that feels like. You've got thousands and thousands of critical personal safety devices out there in people's hands that they are using, and you've been getting great results. People have been saved from all kinds of horrible things. I'll talk about specifics another time. And then they're all down, and you eventually get hold of somebody within the SIM company to be told that it will be investigated and you'll be updated by 11 o'clock on the Monday. And this is Friday. And you're like, whoa, what do you mean? The whole lot are down. We need it looking at now. And the supplier points to the clause in the contract that says we have X amount of working hours. And that doesn't include the weekend. And you're just thinking, wow, really? Is that the way it is? And guess what happened over that weekend? Yeah, you've guessed it. We missed, we missed audio evidence for an attempted murder. And we had all that to deal with for weeks and months afterwards because of the blasted SIM card provider. Next one. This is ridiculous. <sighs> We migrated 5,000 SIM cards from a main network to an aggregator. And you could say that Keysim's an aggregator now, okay? So the equivalent of us. And they were in a two-year contract. After two years, 1,000 of the SIM cards was lost, which is what happens with um, temporary deployment systems and stuff. You lose them. We tried to cancel the thousand SIMs. So we said, look, we've run the two year contract. We've lost them. We need to cancel off the subscriptions now on them 1000. And guess what they came back with? You can do that for a fee 
of £15 per SIM. 15 grand to cancel a thousand SIM cards. They didn't even supply in the first place. We refused to pay it, but then the bill was in arrears and in their eyes, they said, well, you are now in breach of contract. So if you don't pay that invoice, then we'll disconnect the other 4,000. Give us your money. We went to solicitors, we took it to a barrister and they said, you will lose, you will need to pay. Um, and eventually we managed to get out of a lot of it. Do you know how? We thought, I bet these guys, because in the contract it says, if you can't return that physical bit of plastic, we got a load of Sims that they never supplied and sent them back. They weren't gonna match them and they didn't. So we got a load of it back in the end. But just them two events made me think that this is an industry that is ripe for disruption, okay? And that's where it starts. So then a load of executives that I know move to a backbone provider called Tele2 IoT. Tele2 have got official licensing agreements with Vodafone O2 E and 3. Brilliant. We have got ourselves here the potential of a new business. We've got the backbone. We've got a star, we've got a chance. Because I wanted to do this. I really wanted to do it. It's like, I'm gonna walk away from what I'm doing now and I am gonna make my own SIM company and it's gonna be amazing. Then we took that backbone and said, well, okay, these we can't have SIM cards breaking out in Sweden and we need control. So we integrated it into our own private internet service provider, okay? So we took that backbone and interconnected it into a company called Felix Limited, which is known by, owned by um, a guy called Marek Kosalski. that as luck would have it, we were very, very friendly with for a long time before we started Keysim. So we integrate the traffic into there and bingo, we've got it. We have got the utopia technical solution now, multi-network, UK breakout, we can do private access, remote access. We can build our own beautiful portal. We can do away with all the ridiculous um, contractual terms that the industry are thrusting onto people. We can make it pay as you go, do everything. Amazing. So I quit my job uh, and I was earning 100K and I quit. I remortgaged my house and then quit. <laughs> as soon as the money landed, I quit and I put it all into Keysim. And it took around six months to actually build what would be the minimum viable product, a SIM that you could put into somebody's hands and let them control and use. Then guess what happened? Two days after, the country went into lockdown and the whole economy got shut for basically two years, okay? Imagine how that felt. Remortgaged, no wage, no market, no nothing. Me, stuck literally stuck, clinging on for dear life. No furlough, because I had no wages. No self-employed support, because I wasn't self-employed. The one thing that I was eligible for was the £10,000 council um, grant for renting a building. But I forgot to apply, and they said, you're late, so you're not having that either. So I had to take out a high-interest bridging loan to try and keep my house, right? It's shocking. So we, came, we come out of lockdowns, they start lifting, and it's like, right, we've got a market now, but I've got all this debt behind me, I've got no customers, I've just got this incredible product. How the hell are we gonna get it to market? And there was only one way of doing it, doing exactly this, but not on YouTube, videos, LinkedIn specifically. I just battered LinkedIn with posts and videos of me doing signal tests with multi-network SIM cards. Use a little case like this. Just take it out to the beaches and the mountains and show this SIM card getting signal where other SIMs cannot and the different speeds. And it was hard work. But eventually we started picking up client after client after client after client after client, mostly small. 
And from there, it just evolved and it um, became what it is now, which is a um, rapidly growing, absolutely renowned as the technological leader in the realms of multi-network SIM cards. There is just nothing else quite like it. It's, it's, it's amazing. It really is. Um, and that, 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 comes, that message comes from the end users. This is today's latest shipment of gear looks. Quite a small order. Got much bigger ones. Um, but yeah, I just thought that really I'd share what went into beforehand. It's all very well celebrating where we are now, but it's interesting for people to know what went into actually getting us here. Um, God, this last quarter, there's been over 10 million megabytes of data passed through the core. There's well over 5,000 SIMs in use. It just grows rapidly. That needs updating, like I say. Um, it'll be it'll be a substantial business. That a lot of you, if you haven't heard of it, you probably will do at some point. And that's where it all started. It's this classic startup story, really. Building it based on pain from the past. Building the service exactly how a customer would want it. Not how we'd like it which is multi-network, pay-as-you-go, supported properly and doesn't go down on a Friday and not come up until the Monday. And that's it. A 11-minute overview of where Keysim started.